Hey guys, this is the Samsung 980 Pro PCLE 4.0 NVMe M2 SSD. I'm going to do a quick unboxing of this device and also do a complete setup of this SSD and use it as an external hard drive. This is what happened to the SSD as soon as I took it out of the box and hopefully it is not damaged. This is the 980 Pro from Samsung and this is not the latest iteration of this SSD. There is a 990 Pro but the speed on this one is extremely fast and it is very close to the 990 Pro. On the front of this SSD you have all the information about the device and on the back there is a small section where it has a small cooling pad made out of copper. So in terms of speed the 980 Pro can go up to 7000 megabyte per seconds as read speed and it can go up to 5000 megabyte per seconds as writing speed. The advertised speed is for the ideal the most ideal condition that this device can provide those speed. With this SSD I'm going to use my Sebrant enclosure and it is going to be my external hard drive. The installation is very easy. I just inserted the SSD in an angle of 45 degree. You can see it here. It is at 45 degrees and after that I simply need to press down on the SSD in order for it to sit flat. Put the small pin that will lock it in place. The enclosure that I will be using came with this pre-installed thermal pad. That is the pink stuff that you're seeing and the blue one is the other thermal pad that I added extra on the inside of this enclosure. The installation does not require required any additional thermal pad, I just added this one to increase the heat dissipation. Having a good heat dissipation is going to increase the life of your SSD and it also increase the performance of your SSD. So right now it is time to set up the new 980 Pro. The first time that I plugged the enclosure with the 980 Pro, the MacBook Pro that I am using didn't recognize it. It simply says that the disk that you attach was not readable by this computer. To start using the SSD you need to initialize it first. By initialize you simply need to format the SSD into the preferred SSD format that you need and after that you can have access to your SSD. Currently I'm in disk utility and you can see we have Sebrant Media. This is the enclosure. At the moment the format says uninitialized. Also the only thing that we can see at this moment is the 2 terabyte memory that is exact and we need to start the formatting of the SSD. I clicked on erase at the top right of the disk utility and after that I inserted a name for my new SSD and I chose the format APFS. With a MacBook Pro Mac OS, you're going to have the best speed, the most speed with APFS format. Formatting the 980 Pro is very fast and it is already done. After the formatting has been completed and the device is ready to be used, I'm going to start speed testing this device in order to see what kind of speed I'm getting with my M1 MacBook Pro. The Samsung 980 Pro is one of the best SSD that you can get and be one of the most reliable SSD that you can get. For the speed test on my new SSD, I'm going to use disk speed test. I simply need to go inside the new SSD and select it as the target disk. Let me know in the comment box what type of speed I might be getting with this new SSD and let's start the test and see what I'm getting. For the initial test, the writing speed goes up to 975 megabyte per seconds. On the reading speed, I'm getting 892 megabyte per seconds. These results are not very close to the one advertised by the 980 Pro. The speed that I'm getting for writing and reading are already much more higher than the one that I was getting with the SanDisk Extreme Pro. I did the speed test multiple times to see if I can get something different but it is very consistent. I'm getting 975 on writing and 890 on reading every single runs that I did for this test. I am very satisfied with the speed that I'm getting but I'm going to format the SSD once again into a different format in order to see what kind of speed I'm getting with XFAT. In order to format again from APFS into another format, you need to delete the APFS volume and after that you can erase the disk and format it into a different format. So the main difference between XFAT and APFS is that XFAT can be used in any other operating system. It can be used in a MacBook and also in a Windows PC. Generally XFAT is for everybody but APFS is only for MacBook which means that if you have APFS you cannot access your disk using a Windows PC, Linux and any other operating system. I'm ready to do the test with the XFAT format and see what kind of speed I'm getting. So on the first run I'm getting 629 as writing speed while using the XFAT format and compared to the APFS it was 975. For the reading 
loading speed it is not good it is extremely bad i'm getting around 166 megabyte per second which means that if i'm using the 980 pro as xfat for video editing it might not work very well the xfat format is very good if you're using multiple operating system but as you can see it on a macbook pro and using this enclosure specially i'm not getting anything and the reading speed is extremely bad again i did the same thing i let the device run the test multiple times in order to see if i can get something different but i'm still getting the same numbers the reading speed is very bad and the writing speed is decent the apfs format works so well on macbook because the internal ssd on a macbook is formatted to be apfs since my m1 macbook pro cannot give me 7000 and 5000 megabyte per seconds as write and read speed i'm going to go back into apfs and continue with 975 and 890 the internal ssd on this m1 macbook pro if i do the same test can give me 5000 read and 5000 write as soon as I formatted back into APFS and did another speed test, I'm getting again the same type of speed as earlier. Currently, I'm getting 973 and 887 megabytes per second for writing and reading. The enclosure that I'm using is USB 3.2, 10 gigabyte per second USB Type C. The enclosure is a little bit warm after I did all these tests, and in order to get much higher speeds, you need an enclosure that can go up to 40 gigabyte per second, Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. My next step is going to get a Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 enclosure in order to see what kind of speeds I'm getting. If you have a laptop or a computer that can take this 980 Pro directly on the internals, you can do it, and it is going to deliver much higher speeds and similar to the advertised speed as Samsung said.